Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Lars Hoekland and I'm doing now a series of videos called Purpose in Genesis. And uh, I hope you have seen the other two videos. We've come to part number three today, where we're going to look at Purpose in the Garden of Eden. Now, there are two main points in this, and the first is God's gracious provisions, and the second one is man's wondrous privilege. Uh, now, we find the story of uh, the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 through 19. This is before the fall and the story of the serpent and all this. We're talking now about the beginning where they, the Eden was uh, created and made by God. But uh, the Garden of Eden speaks grace upon grace for us. The man that God made was invited to enter into it and enjoy the fullness of God. <clears throat> the garden might be regarded as a type of provision that uh, God has made in Christ Jesus. So the garden is just not just a garden, it is the garden, the most famous garden of all, maybe more famous than uh, the hanging gardens of Babylon. <clears throat> But I'm going to comment on this uh, passage of scripture and I'm going to start with uh, point number one, which is God's gracious provisions that we see in this passage. Now, first under this, we note that uh, it was a garden and a garden is, uh, if you like gardening, it's uh, something very positive, very therapeutic. Um, now, the Garden of Eden was a special enclosure, a place prepared for man. We are reminded of the covenant made with Christ before the world was made. Um, so, uh, it's strange to think about all these things that God has planned even before he started creation. Now, uh, Christ was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And, okay, you, you may so, say that that doesn't sound right. But uh, when saying that, it is that that was God's plan all the way from the beginning. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 is one that I've come back to many times because I'm currently in Norwegian doing a study on uh, the letter of uh, to the Ephesians, uh, and uh, uh, there is so much goodness in here. This uh, Ephesians is like it's the gold mine of the Christians, uh, the gold mine of the church. All these wonderful things that we have in Christ, and in reading Ephesians chapter one and verse four, it says, "According as He hath chosen us in Him." before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So, the plan of salvation, Jesus dying on the cross, and all this was actually planned before God made the earth, the heavens, Adam and Eve, and the Garden of Eden and so on and so forth. Now, God's salvation plan was put into motion even before the Garden of Eden. It's so wonderful that, uh, you know, we could keep on saying it forever, really. So it was a garden, we see, and it was planted by the Lord. Man had no hand in making this garden. Uh, it's like an inheritance of the Lord, and man had no, no hand in the making of this inheritance. This, like the work of salvation, was the work of God. Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9 says, Till salvation is of the Lord. So creation is of the Lord and salvation is of the Lord. 
both the same as we did you know when we looked at um, creation and the creation week we see that there is a there's a connection here between creation and um, salvation or um, as we say regeneration is really the the word that we we use uh, a more posh word i suppose uh, but uh, both uh, the plant and the planting were his alone god was the one that did all this and uh, to compare it in john chapter 3 verse 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave uh sorry for god so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life now this is one of the most popular verses in in the bible now if you just say john three sixteen, everybody knows what you're talking about and uh, this is amazing that god loved the world so much that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and this seems to collide with the idea that uh, um this regeneration and salvation and the salvation plan and everything everyone that's going to be saved they have been chosen before the foundation of the world now actually both things are true and this this is what you find when you look at the bible you you find many many paradoxes that uh, you think that you can't have the one and the other you need to choose one for instance Jesus was a hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. Now, if you put them together, that's two hundred percent, and we will say that well, nobody's two hundred percent. A hundred percent is the maximum. Well, when it comes to the Bible and when it comes to God, it's not true. Uh, Jesus wasn't fifty percent man and fifty percent God. He was completely man and completely god so this is uh, in a way one of the pa many paradoxes that we find in the bible and the um, the uh, election of the believers before the foundation of the world and the, the verses that say that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not have to perish but is able to have everlasting life both these truths are true. Uh, and it's hard to get your mind around that. But this is not the uh, topic for this video. So I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so um, it was a garden. It was planted by the Lord and it was planted for man. Mankind, that is. Not just for Adam. Uh, God had the good of man in mind when he created each tree in the garden. He considered all of man's needs and made ample provision for his complete satisfaction. Now, all the eternal forethought of God on our behalf is seen in the fullness that dwells in Christ. In Christ is God provisions uh, for the needy man and that of course talks about salvation again but what was in the garden we had first we had the the tree of life now the tree of life that we find in verse number nine is important you can say because the the uh <clears throat> the most important need of this tree that was standing in the midst in the garden uh, is life that's man's greatest and first need if you don't have life you don't have anything else i always say that every breath you take is a gift from god and i stand by that but you know life is also a gift from god uh, and um, the tree of life was there in the middle because uh, we need 
life. And John 10.10, 10, uh, in John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I am come that ye may have life. So this is true, not just merely in the physical sense, but also in the spiritual sense. Uh, this was the tree of eternal life to Adam. The cross of Christ in the midst is the tree of life for fallen man. Before Adam could die, he had to be driven out of the garden, away from that tree of life. Because if he ate of that, it says that he would never die. To be without Christ is to be without hope. So, um, uh, if we have Christ, then we have life. We have spiritual life, not just physical life. Uh, and we see this about life. The tree of life is very important. Life in all categories are really important. Then we see that, uh, second, that every tree that was pleasant was in the garden. Now, here also Adam found his pleasure and the the trees and everything was very beautiful to look at and they still are today you don't have to go to eat the garden of eden to to see pretty flowers and pretty trees and and everything but everything looked pleasant everything looked good and uh, this is also the case of god's provision for us in christ there is life and every pleasant thing when we come to Christ. Every pleasure worth having. Now, some pleasures we shouldn't enjoy. The good pleasures are the ones that we get from God. Okay, So there is a difference. The lust of the flesh uh, seeks pleasure but it seeks sinful pleasure. Uh, now, we seek every pleasure worth having, which are, uh, is a good pleasure in Christ. Okay, so every tree that was pleasant was found in the garden, and then every tree that was good for food. Now, there are many pleasures that uh, doesn't satisfy uh, now, these, all these trees that were in the garden, were they were good for food. Uh, they built up and strengthened those that ate them. Uh, now, when I did a study in uh, Norwegian about the Lord's Prayer, I was talking about the um, um, give us today our daily bread which today we maybe say, well, God, please uh, help me <laughs> help me not eat so much. That's more the thing. But have you thought about all the wonderful things that God has made available for us to eat? He could have just given us manna every day. Wouldn't that have been boring? It, it, was, it was sweet and probably good. Uh, but, you know, you eat it for uh, several years and you get tired of it. They ate it for 40 years. Imagine that. But God has given us so much good food that we can enjoy. And I enjoy my food a little bit too much. But um, going back to the garden then, God had given lots of trees with lots of fruit that they were free to eat from. Every promise of God is, figuratively speaking, a fruit tree. And the garden of God is full of them. So we're lucky, we're fortunate that we have so many good things that we can enjoy. Now there also was the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And um, I used to say, especially when I was a younger Christian, wouldn't it have been better if it wasn't there at all? Well, many, maybe you have thought the same thing as well. But there is a deep truth in this tree. 
Now, there is um, uh, innocence we're talking about here, because it says that we, we would give uh, Adam and Eve, when they ate from the tree, from the fruit of the tree, they would know everything. Well, they didn't know everything. We still don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. No man knows everything. But they lost their innocence. Suddenly they realized that they were naked. Never thought of that before. All the, the innocence was gone. Sin had crept in. Now, we cannot know good and evil in a real sense till we have been planted into Christ. Sin and grace is welcome here. Also, we see in the Garden of Eden, the river of water in verse number 10. There was a river that watered the garden. I find it really interesting as coming from Bergen in Norway, where it rains a whole lot. I think it's really interesting to see that um, uh, it never rained in the Garden of Eden. It said that a mist rose up from the ground and watered the place and also you had the river that watered the garden but there was no rain not till the days of Noah uh, imagine that Jesus said that he had the living waters in John chapter 4 Psalm 46 verse 4 says there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the river makes glad <clears throat> the city of God now the blessings in Christ are all made fruitful by the power of the Holy Spirit surely in God we have a good heritage think of that that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is the one that makes things happen also in a Christian's life. And the river often is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Right. And now that was uh, point number one. Point number two is man's wondrous privileges. Uh, now, first of all, we see that uh, man was put in the garden by God in verse number 15. <clears throat> it says, the Lord put the man into the garden. I find this very interesting. Because that means that Adam was not created in the garden. He was created somewhere else. We don't know where. Nobody knows where. It doesn't say in the Bible. We can have theories. We can try to fantasize about it. But the thing is that God, the only place we know that God didn't make Adam was in the garden. Because it said that he, he put Adam, he put the man into the garden. So Adam was not made in the garden. Our, engraf uh, our engrafting into Christ is a divine act. Just like God, by divine act, puts Adam into the garden, we are being put in a divine act into Christ. The provision is much, but that is not enough. <clears throat> The soul of man must be brought into touch with it. This is achieved through the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is working. Now, I'd like to say that some people focus too much on the Spirit. It's on the Spirit this, the Spirit that, and they uh, forget about the Father and about the Son. And they hardly get a mention. But others, again, they don't mention the spirit at all they talk about the father and they talk about the son and they totally leave out the spirit the right thing is to have all three parts of the trinity equally represented we should remember all of them we can pray to all of them and they're all important well okay next he was put in um, to enjoy the work of god what grace. He was put in the garden to enjoy the work of God. God had done it. 
we're talking about the Sabbath day uh, in the last video when uh, the first day Adam had in the garden was the Sabbath day, day of rest, day of blessing to be with God. Now, we are all blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. This is going back to Ephesians again, chapter 1 and verse 3. We are all blessed with spiritual, all spiritual blessings in Christ. Not just some, all spiritual blessings. What a wonderful verse that is. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Also, he was uh, put in to work and to watch. He was to dress the garden and he was to keep the garden. We read in verse number 15. Now, the Christian life, um, though, uh, is a life in faith. And uh, it's not really a life of idleness. The, uh, the Christian life um, is meant to be a busy life. We're supposed to be doing the work of God, but uh, it's uh, work that is a, a blessing. It's not supposed to be that hard work. In the beginning, in the garden, the work wasn't that hard. It was after that sin came in, after the fall, that uh, they had to work and sweat to be able to get bread on the table. Also, we see that um, he was put in with divine liberty and warning. This is verse 16 through 17. Now, we uh, shall we uh, sin that grace may abound, uh, P uh, Paul said. God forbid, you know, sin may not cut off sonship, but it will destroy fellowship. Uh, imagine that, that uh, uh, we were put, I mean, man was put in the garden and he had all the divine liberties when he was in there. And he had ample warning about uh, what to do and what not to do, and especially not what not what to touch, uh, or what not to touch. Um, I'm getting my tongue twisted there a little bit. Uh, but you know, we see all these wonderful things, and and uh, as we look at the creation and the wonderful things that God has created, and we see. Uh, the regeneration and uh, salvation in Christ. And uh, we see that uh, the the working agent here is the Holy Spirit, both in creation and in regeneration. So uh, this uh, brings me to the conclusion on this uh, short video about um, the Garden of Eden. And uh, next time I make a video in this series, will be part four about the purpose in the first marriage so um, hopefully you look forward to that and hopefully I've said something that uh, was new to you um, uh, I love uh, the book of Genesis Genesis my favorite book of the Bible and uh, that's why I like to go through it and uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but um, I'm going to do a little bit here and a little bit there. And uh, at the end, hopefully there'll be some interesting videos to watch. But uh, thank you for watching this video. I pray that you'll be safe till, uh, till the next video comes. God be with you.